three different things that inspire me today are my friends, Mazzy Star, and nail polish. I think the moment I realized that things started to change for me was when Pretty Girl happened for me. I think the moment that that video started to go viral and the moment that views kept doubling each day, my life was completely different just overnight, so. <laughs> I think I'll be on tour. It'll be the last day on tour, so I will be around my friends, and I think Khalid has some, some party in mind. I'm not really sure, so we'll see. Favorite Benz? Oh, man. Funny story, I don't actually know shit about cars, so I don't think I can answer that question, really. 1999 She by Deaton Chris Anthony. It's my favorite. The album title is supposed to have a double meaning with my rheumatoid arthritis, which is an autoimmune disease, but then also the whole message to the record was to kind of talk about things that usually have a negative connotation to it and give it positive spin or at least show that there's light at the end of the tunnel in terms of whatever you're dealing with. Being immune to the things that make you weak or make you sad. So um, it was a big deal for me to talk about all of the, the things that I went through and how I got through them and to make sure that I tell everyone who's listening to my own music that it gets, gets better. <laughs> I got it tattooed. So. <laughs> if I could be closer to anyone, it would be my family, because I'm on tour. It'd be nice to see them more often. <laughs> the Beatles song? Yep. She should know that I'm doing okay. She worries about me a lot on tour, but things are going well. I'm taking care of myself. You know, she FaceTimes me like every single day, so I think she already knows everything. <laughs> Oh. Yeah, I was gonna, I was gonna say Ringo, just cuz. <laughs> Guitars. Right now I'm using like a classic, like black strat. Pretty iconic. I think I'd, I would stick with that one forever. The first CD I ever owned was J-Lo, self-titled. Yes. Oh my gosh, you went deep into my YouTube, wow. Um, yeah, I mean, I always like to have elements of it in my music, especially when I'm performing live. Like, I like to take songs that don't, don't have that in the recording and repurpose them to fit that for live, because I love singing that way, mm -hmm. so. Her music meant everything to me, yes. I absolutely love Amy Winehouse. She's one of my biggest inspirations in the whole world. Probably in high school. I made a video on YouTube uh, with my friend Isabel, and I used to make videos on YouTube with the VHS camera my, my parents would use to film us for our home videos, just when I was growing up. It still works and everything, and I bought cables for it to, um, to be able to convert the, the film onto my laptop. So I was able to edit videos and make fake music videos. I forget what song I chose, I think it was a Blood Orange song. But I filmed us going to this roller rink that was near our high school, I think. And it went terribly, but I made it look cool <laughs> on the video. No, they weren't. They weren't made then. Um, they were both made before, um, before that trip. But I just love that photo. Yeah, I went to London with my mom, and it was just one of the best trips I'd ever been on. But I felt that that photo just kind of fit the mood of my old music. And so 
So I had a small following on SoundCloud for like a while. I think like I started on Bandcamp and then I started making covers on Facebook. I had a Facebook music page and then I went to YouTube and then I deleted all of those and then I went to Bandcamp and then to SoundCloud. And over the years on SoundCloud, I kind of just gained this small audience that would just pay attention to whatever I posted on there. They didn't really know me from anything else. I put the Pretty Girl video on YouTube. And I hadn't even posted Pretty Girl on SoundCloud at all. And it went viral on YouTube. And YouTube was more of a, more of a safe place for me than SoundCloud just because no one knew me on there. It was really strange for it to work out on YouTube and not SoundCloud, but yeah. I'd say like YouTube definitely is what did everything for me. So we worked with AARDA, which is an organization that highlights children and people with autoimmune diseases. And I was diagnosed with arthritis, rheumatoid arthritis at 17. So. It was important for me to, to talk about that and bring that to light because I feel like things like that aren't talked about enough. It hasn't really been talked about a lot in the music industry at all, so I thought it was important, something to do. Oh, whoa! Who would I want to cover my song? I think I would love if Carly Rae Jepsen covered Forever. I would go crazy. <laughs> she would make it like 10,000 times better. <laughs> Little Rascals. Everyone around me knows that that is, <laughs> I can quote that movie like an unhealthy amount. <sighs> oh my God. Goons and Silver Spoons was my psychology, my senior year psychology like project there was like you could either write an essay or like make up a song or I think my junior year I made a song and my senior year I just, just decided to make my own episode of Freaks and Geeks because that was one of the prompts and at first I, it was kind of a joke but then I had to go through with it because I needed to finish <laughs> senior year <laughs> um, the prompt was to recreate a Freaks and Geeks episode or make your own. So I made Goons and Silver Spoons. I had everyone in the class act in it, which was ended up being really counterproductive because the whole point of making the film was to show everyone, but everyone in the room was in it. So no one was like surprised about anything. <laughs> they just were in the, the film, so I just showed it. And it did okay. No, <laughs> I think eh, like an A minus. I think I Missed a few marks. <laughs> I feel like JPEG Mafia. Yeah, JPEG. Yeah. <laughs> JPEG Mafia. <laughs> yeah. <laughs>